Hey everybody out there in the YouTube world, happy Sunday. Coming at you with another quick review video. Uh, today I decided to get out my Savage 110 Tactical. This particular model is chambered in 308 and has a 24 inch heavy fluted barrel. Um, just thought I'd uh, <clears throat> get outside and shoot a couple groups with the thing and tell you guys my thoughts about it, what works and what doesn't. And like I said, I had a couple comments that talk about they like my reviews because they're quick and to the point and uh, I get that. I don't like to sit through a 25 minute review on a rifle. Um, there's so much review, uh, info out there, you pretty much know what you're getting before you buy it. So just thought I'd tell you what works and what doesn't work for me and my impressions of it. <clears throat> so as you can see, this is my 110 Tactical. I bought it about, uh, I'm gonna say, five or six months ago. Um, no, no. Well, I don't know when they came out, but uh, as soon as I saw it, I said, I, you know what, I'd really like to have that. Uh, the stock, as you can see, is not the gray one that comes with the, my cousin and his boys, their young boys, they painted it. And he said, hey, uh, when you get that gun, my boys want to paint it in camo. And I said, well, hey, go ahead. That's, that's tactical. So as you can see, what I got on top of this uh, gun is a Vortex Optic. I won't spend a whole lot of time talking about this scope because there's so much info out there on the internet with shooters that are far greater than me with far better channels with far better info <clears throat> i'm not going to bore you with all that um just want to tell you a little bit about it the one that i decided to go with was the three through i think it's three no i'm sorry six through 18 by 50. Um, i decided to go with that one because it was a couple hundred dollars cheaper than the 56 power model and i spent that extra money on some nice rings and for the type of shooting that I'm doing, 56 objective really is not going to make that much difference for me. Um, but I can tell you that it's worth the hype. I mean, this glass is silly. This particular one that I've got is an MOA. And the turrets are great, awesome clicks. Um, clearly, you can't be tactical without the sunshade and the sticker. Comes with the sticker in the box. Um, I've got a vortex throw lever, um, and like I said, I. The money that I saved by not getting the, six, the 56 power model, I got these precision rings, um, and they're really nice, and I don't know, I don't know how huge of a difference it'll make for me, but I decided to go with those anyway. And I got the Vortex uh, flip open caps, Vortex scope level, but that's about all the time I'm going to spend on this. And like I said, it's MOA, it's got the EBR2C reticle, it's awesome. Uh, it's worth the hype, go spend the money if you got it, it's, it's amazing. <clears throat> I'm going to spend a little more time talking about the rifle itself. Um, it's a cold day here in Ohio. The temperature is, I wrote it down on the target here somewhere, it's about 30 degrees. Uh, I didn't get a chance to get out and shoot until about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And I decided to go with three different loads today. Um, because it was so windy and so crappy, I thought, well, how good the, can the performance be from this rifle while well, I was wrong? Um, the wind that we've got out here today is was consistent to seven to eight miles per hour left to right, but it was really gusty. Uh, so I was like, well, I don't want to waste all my hand loads on it. But um, one thing that I will say about this rifle is it's unlike anything that I've ever shot. And I never shot any of those high dollar rifles before. Um, I think I bought this for right around 600 bucks. I got it off Bud's Guns. Um, so it's... Um, fairly inexpensive for a beginner precision shooter rifle I think it's great um, I decided to put a dead air muzzle device on this on this it works well I think it reduces the recoil pretty well I'm sure there's better ones out there um, on my 6.5 Grindel it doesn't reduce as quite as much as I would like it to uh, but this one I have one of my buddies does have a suppressor that will fit over these dead air devices, and I have threaded over this before, um, which is really neat. Uh, I don't have suppressor, but we can shoot my supersonic rounds without hearing protection, which is really nice. So that was one thing. Um, it does come with a 10-round detachable magazine uh, made by Magpul, which is nice. I only have one of them. I haven't had the need to get any more. Um, the bipod I have on here is just... Uh, this particular one's a cheap one. It's only like a $50 one from Walmart or whatever. I was there whenever I bought this and needed one at the time. It does swivel, but it's, it's kind of sucky. I'm going to be getting an Atlas here pretty soon for this because it deserves better than that. Um, clearly, can't be tactical. A lot of stock bag. And I have to rep Ohio too. Go Bucks. Um, main reason I did this was to cover that awful high-rise bump 
that the AccuStock has because it comes with all those different cheek risers and you can adjust your length of pull and all that. Uh, my particular eye relief and how I lay on the rifle, I needed the tallest one like a lot of other people do. Well, I thought it just looked goofy, so I just bought a bag to put over it and was done with it. But, you know, what are you going to do? <clears throat> so, and like I said, I got a chance to get out to shoot a little bit today. I shot this rifle quite a bit. Uh, I've had 308s for a long time. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about a couple of the rounds that I've been developing. Um, so, like I said, 30 degrees, pretty windy, gusty, consistent, seven to eight miles per hour, left to right. The first round that I did a group with, which is my favorite round that I've developed, developed, is um, 167 grain Lapua CNR bullet. And this load that I've got has worked well for like the past three, three weights that I've had. I don't know why, it just works. And this particular one, I'll show you here, not that make a difference, um, as you can see, 167 grains with 42 grains of market. And it's just worked well. I'm not the best shooter, I won't claim to be the best shooter, but when I get behind this rifle with that round, it covers up all my mistakes and shoots ridiculous. So I'm gonna put this aside really quick so I can show you my target that I shot today. <clears throat> so this is the first group that I shot and I'll show you here, as you can see. And it was really windy and I was expecting to go out there and just give an honest review and this thing was putting together groups that were making me go, what's going on here? So the loop, Lapua Senar 160 grit grain bullet with 42 grains of Varget powder was averaging about 26, 32 feet per second, and I was shooting all these through a chronograph. That particular group measured 0 .70 roughly, and it's not an exact science for me. I didn't get out all that computer software and stuff like that. I just took my calipers and measured it to eye. So it's about 0 .70, and I'll show you it again. It's close, um, but as you can see, it's, it's a great group. And these are five shot groups, I should add, by the way. Um, that's a round that has worked well for me. Not only out of this rifle, but out of a couple rifles before. Not quite as good as this one, mind you, but it's worked well. The second round that I went out and shot today was the Nosler RDF, Reduced Drag Factor Bullet. And these have a ridiculously high ballistics coefficient, so I always thought these would do really well. Um, and they did, they did today. I've, I've shot them out of my 6.5 Grindel, and I haven't quite figured out a powder, ch powder charge that works well for it. Um, and I just kind of threw something together for the 308, um, and I'll show you here, and it, it's a great looking round. Um, so this particular one, Nosler RDF, and that's a 175 grain bullet with 43 grains of Varget powder. Uh, I've always been partial to Varget, it's, it's worked well for me. I haven't tried too awful many powders, like a lot of guys out there, but like I said, it's been very consistent for me and it works well. So. I'll show you the group with this. Um, now, I need to talk about this one a little bit. So, as you can see, this is a five shot group. And this little guy happened to be the third shot that I fired. And when I was behind this rifle, I, was, I fired the first two and they were touching. I was like, man, that's a good group. And then the third one I fired, I said, man, something was off to me. That one seemed a little hot. And all these are hand loads. This is done by me. I don't use a crazy expensive um, powder gauge or anything like or a powder scale. Um, and I even wrote down on my uh, little notepad that I take here. This is where I write down the velocities and which bullet goes where and so on and so forth. And I said, that particular one, that's my third round. For whatever reason, I don't know if it was a hiccup of my powder scale um, or what it was, but something felt off. And then I looked at the chronograph and it was 200 feet per second faster than all the ones, well, the two that I shot before that. So as you can see here, that one was a little hot. And I don't know if this is a hiccup or what, but that was the only one out of all the stuff that I've shot in a long time that's been that far off. So, who knows? So I measured it without that flyer, and the group measured 0.83. And that was shooting about 2,644 feet per second. Which really surprised me, because like I said, I went in with low expectations for that because my Grindel didn't shoot it very well. But I should have known better, this gun soaks up all the bad stuff that I do. The third ammo that I decided to take out today was the Hornady ELD 168 grain <clears throat> bullets and this particular load I loaded with 45 grains of IMR 4064. I've shot IMR 4064 before, it works well. I'm not that distinguished of a shooter to know 
If you gave me a bullet that had IMR 44, 4064, and Varget, I probably wouldn't know the difference. And I probably still couldn't tell if I was shooting through a chronograph or whatever it was. But anyway, I, I have them both. I like to try them both because you have to find that load that your rifle likes well. Well, to my surprise, this was better than my Lapua loads, which I haven't found anything that's even come close to those yet. So here's the group that I shot with the Hornady rounds. That's a five shot group. And that particular one measured to my eye with my calibers about 0.565. And that surprised me. So that's something that I'm probably gonna have to explore a little more. And another thing, this is about 200 feet per second hotter than those Sanar rounds. Um, and I only did a little bit of them. I haven't had the chance to push it out very far. My Lapua rounds, the, the furthest I've shot those lately was only about 450 yards and they're pretty consistent. I haven't shot a group with them, but I can hit my silhouette target, which is 12 by 20 every, every single time. Um, it's not something that I'm worried about. Uh, now, to my, like I said, I, I'm not the best shooter in the world. And this gun just covers up all my mistakes. Oh, I guess I should show you that. Um, I mean, you've all seen them before. It's a good looking round. Um, it covers up my mistakes. And that's not even close to the tightest group I've shot with this thing. Um, the last time I shot it, I, it was late fall. Conditions were perfect. There was no wind. It was like 65 degrees. I mean, literally perfect. Shot a .38 group with this. And I don't, I don't have the target anymore. I used to have it. People were calling me weird for hanging it up in my fridge, but I think that's the lowest, the smallest measurable group that I ever shot with any rifle. So I hung it up in my fridge. What are you gonna do? Uh, just a couple quick things about this. Um, the action is really, really smooth. Um, never really have any hangups. It doesn't. This one doesn't quite like horn any brass as much. It doesn't. Sometimes it won't eject them for whatever reason. I don't know why. Um, I have a, a lot of Lapua brass, and it has no problem with those. They're very consistent. Um, but the only only time I ever have it failure to eject is on horn any brass. I don't know why. Maybe you guys know why. I don't know why. Um, but other than that, you guys know the Accu Trigger. The Accu, this one's just adjusted down to two pounds. Um, anything lower than that, it kind of fails. Um, a lot of people out there that have that will probably know what I'm talking about. You think you can adjust that screw all the way out? Well, it doesn't work that way. You have to kind of find that sweet spot. Um, it's got the Accu stock. Uh, it's great. It's got aluminum bedding. And I was thinking about getting a chassis for this thing, but I really don't want to mess with it because for whatever reason, this rifle just came together and is set up awesome. Um, and I'm shooting it great. And like I said, not not me, this rifle. Um, I'm not really here to lie to you guys or blow smoke up your asses or anything like that. I'm, I'm, I'm not getting paid by any of these people to talk about any of this stuff. This is all just stuff that I buy myself. I spend my hard earned government money on and I just experiment, see what works and see what doesn't. And like Bob Lee said, I'm just a pecker wood that lives in the hills with too many guns. And I had time on my hands, so I just figured I'd talk about it. And out of all the rifles I've shot, this is, it's hands down the best. It, it's silly. It's silly accurate. I know every time that I go out there and pull a trigger, it's going where it's going, regardless. Um, but anyway, if you guys have any questions about it, I, I, I haven't seen too awful many uh, YouTubes about the 110 Tactical. I've been looking at a couple other Savage models, thinking about getting a 6.5 Creedmoor, uh, thinking about a couple of different things, but I'm not sure I can justify it because this thing's just so darn accurate. Um, but anyway, hope you guys are having a good Sunday. Uh, stay tuned. I'll see you later.